Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. Now we're really coming to the end of our project and I've finished another red panel. It's in here somewhere. I've caught a little charm on that doily. Um, now I think it's closer to the back. Angel you've seen, that was the one we did last. And then I was working on Santa and he is all done. Santa with his lacy plant pantaloons. He's really, really cool. I love how he's come together. I put some beading through here just to jazzy up those yo-yos. And then just stitch down everything with his pantaloons being lace. And um, I put some little beads along the edge of that piece of lace. Just did some slow stitching around these patches, a couple extra buttons, and that was it. So really pleased with that little guy. The piece was a little bit small, so I laid down one big piece of red fabric onto the page and then stitched my piece on top. So it just gave it that little bit extra touch of red around the outside edge. I've joined the two pages together, so that's now complete. And I've slid into the side pocket here the um, key for Santa. So it worked out okay in the end. I was going to put this on the spine, but I did something different on the spine that sort of didn't really need this over the top. So being that Santa's flying by, he's going to need his key and it's close by as well in this pocket. So I'm pretty pleased with the way that's turned out. I still have a piece to do here this is my last one not sure what i'm going to do here we'll see how we go i do know that i want to bring this pineapple um crocheting over that edge you can hear fudge bellowing so whatever i do here um needs that that taken into consideration so i'll just move that pin but before we get on to that one, which probably won't be in this video, it'll be in a few days' time, um, I want to get on to my last blue piece. Now, I have invisible stitched down my background because I'm not sure what I'm doing yet in the background. That's what today's video is about. And I have stitched 90% of the um, little nativity scene that I got from that pattern book that I was showing you in the last video. So now I just want to collage around here with some lace and some trims, just to sort of build up a bit of a, a canopy around them as if they're in the uh, manger. So that's what today's about. And I just got my bucket of tricks here to see what possibly could be used. I'm sure there's some scrappy things in here. So it's just a case of having a bit of a, a rummage. And something sort of getting to the point where I'm using all the same sort of pieces. And you always know when you're getting to the end of the project because you start to look for some new inspiration. That's pretty. That one there is pretty. And that one's pretty. I like the fact that it's going to provide a bit of a canopy. I do like that one. Oh, I like that one. That's pretty. That feels like a roof to me. Now, how do we position these little... Without covering faces, it's going to be like that, I think. Oh, well, that's a definite... That. Now, what do we do through here? If I got something floral, something lacy to follow the theme of the whole piece, this little piece. It really is just fiddling around until we find. Find something suitable. What's this piece here? That 
that's so pretty. I won't use that. I don't really want to cut into that. Oh, I hear that fudge. You probably can't, but he's just... What's it say, Mum? He wants me to sit on a lap is where he wants to be. Mm. I'm not digging any of those. I never did get anything from this. Should this come in? No. Maybe this is the piece. Oh, I just love lace. <clears throat> and to have lace as a major feature through this panel is really ticking all the boxes for me. I do love that. Oh, fudgy, puss puss. You always being naughty today. I'm thinking I'm going to put that lace motif there and just sort of pinch it in to make it fit. And then I might just do some feature stitching around. I still need to stitch baby Jesus, but I was thinking of putting something here for his fudge. Oh, do you have a cat that bellows like that? Yes, pussy. We're talking about you. The bellowing, the bellowing cat. I'm just going to trim this a little bit. I think I'm pretty confident I can make this work. Maybe these leftover pieces could go towards my last red block. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I love it. That's very me. I might just get some pins. And um, have a look at the manger and see what fabric or something we can find to cut out the shape of the manger. So this will just all get stitched down. That's pretty simple. Now, let's have a look in the scrap bucket. I wonder if I could do something with some hessian. Now it's going to fray. It's going to be a difficult task. Maybe, maybe not. I do have a little bit of that. That would work. I think we will cut out a little manger. Now I couldn't trace the original um, scene with mum, dad and bub because my fabric was just too um, thick to see it through. So I ended up just sketching it. So there are no real rules to the piece because it was sort of sketched to start with. So I'm just going to do a bit of a rough drawing for myself, but I got a general feel for what we need for the little basket. Okay. 
the legs on, I need to bring this on some. It's good using up the last of these little scraps. So that will give us something, I think. Yep. There's our little manger. And then I wonder, can we be tricky and find some lace that could be Wondering if we can piece in a little bit of lace or something to trim it. Yeah, I like that. That's good because that little hanky has got family connections. So that lace would have been made by someone. So I'm just going to have that little bit of lace along that top edge of the basket just to give it a little bit of nice dingle dangle. And then I can finish stitching maybe in a paler colour the um, swaddling that went around the baby and then I've got the little bit of lace on the top. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Lovely. So where's my needle and thread? So let's get, let's get stitching. So how are you all? Are you all ready for Christmas? It has come along real quick. It is here. Well and truly. So I'm just going to put some little stitches. Oh, goodness me. So I'm not sure what will happen with videos between Christmas and New Year's. I'm thinking not a lot. I've got quite a bit of Christmas traveling to do and I haven't got anything pre-recorded and I'm sort of in mental thinking stage of projects. So I don't really have anything to rush off and film for you because there's a few things floating around in my head but I'm sort of still still thinking them through so I have a feeling you won't see a video from me until the new year I think I need a bit of a break plus in addition we're starting to order our stock for Christmas 2023 for our business so I'm sort of on the computer all day concentrating on computer work <clears throat> and um, reviewing what sold and what hasn't sold and what do we need to reorder and we need some of this we need some of that you know all of that type of thing and it just takes weeks and um, I'm sort of finding that when I get finished with that for the day I sit down on the couch and I'm just mentally drained to the point where I'm staring at a TV thinking about what I've done for the day and stock and my husband and I are sort of discussing it all and what about this factory do we do an order with them or do we skip them and do that next year have we got enough you know just working through the process of getting our stores ready for next Christmas and then I look at all the needlework sitting beside me well which isn't anything really it's just these couple pieces and I just, I don't know, I feel exhausted mentally, not physically, mentally. So I have a feeling that I probably should focus on um, what have I done? I've re concentrated on what I'm doing here. I should have put a little pin in. That's better. I think I need a pin. Yeah, so I think I need to focus on all those tasks, get them done out of the way, and then I'll feel like I'm back to creative me again. The moment I'm business me. Which brings me to a video that you will see today. When you're watching this one, there'll be a second little six-minute video 
which is um, me walking through the shop. Um, I did it a couple of weeks ago before the crowds came and cleaned it out again. Is um, a little video showing you the shop at uh, Slacks Creek. It's one of two and it is full and decorated and ready for the Christmas season. So we were there one evening. Um, I think it had been pouring rain and we'd gone in to just check that no leaks had come through the roof and the store lights went on and it just looks so pretty actually um no i'm that video didn't work actually I, i'm telling you the wrong story i did film it <clears throat> in the evening um but as i walked through the store um i come across a few areas where the staff was still building it that's right if i remember rightly because i filmed all this ages ago so I went back and filmed it. So the second version is what you will be seeing, which is lots of little um, 30 seconds, little bits. As I sort of walked through, I just filmed a bit, stopped it, filmed a bit. And then over the weekend, I was with some friends and their daughter is really savvy on the computer. Even mum is, she's amazing. And they showed me how to add music and how to fade in, fade out, all things that I have never done with my videos, which I don't really plan on doing in the future because music can be a little bit annoying for the listener. So, but this needed something. And when I attempted to put it up to YouTube, they could hear the Christmas carols that are normally playing in the background, in the shop anyway, and they rejected the video without me going to numerous... Um, institutions to get permission to use those particular songs i think the one was like santa's coming to town or something and um i had to go to someone in minnesota to get permission and it just went on and on and on and i'm like oh okay forget about it and then um i mentioned it to my friends on the weekend and they said oh you can just do this and this and this so they showed me how to turn down the music that was recorded when I was walking through the store then they showed me how to bring in music from um, YouTube approved Christmas songs that have no licensing so they grabbed that file and it was funny because the file was like went for an hour and the first song was really nice but then the next two were really quite slow and I don't know, not depressing, it's Christmas music, but slow and moody, which didn't suit the video. So then they worked out how to cut the first song out and then you pop it underneath your video numerous times. So you'll hear that song repeat probably about four times, which is probably just as annoying but it is a nice song and it sort of suits the video. So I hope it's not too, too annoying. If it gets annoying, just turn the volume down so you can just see the imagery. But I pretty much walk through the store giving a bit of a snapshot of what um, my Christmas shops look like when they're full and ready for the season. It doesn't look like that now. Let me tell you, there's been herds of elephants go through and get all their goodies for Christmas. So we're now sort of in the final week or so and the staff are starting to actually get ready for inventory because we do that early Feb, mid, mid January, early Feb we close for a couple of weeks and we do inventory, which I sort of need done because I'm doing ordering. I'm doing a few sneaky orders now but before they actually go overseas we have done inventory by then and everything's sort of you know ready so that's my world at the moment so as for stitching not having a full direction of where i'm heading with the next project and working on my orders i don't think you're going to see a video from me well you won't if I do I want to review some books I was very lucky from Santa this year 
Well, I intercepted a parcel that I shouldn't have from Santa. The Santa got hold of my one day if I see them I'd like to own book list. Well, Santa got hold of that list and he went to town. And then this parcel started turning up and I just opened one of them thinking, oh, what did I order and I've forgotten. And it was all these books. So I've got to pretend they're under the tree and I haven't seen them. But I had a little flick through some of them and oh, they're great. So if I do a video, guys, it will be me just flicking through the books I got for Christmas because some of them are going to inspire my Roxy Journal of Stitchery. So I sort of want to, you know, flick through them and have a little look. But we'll see. I've got so much going on. We'll see. So I hope you don't mind. I hope you all have a great Christmas and New Year and I hope you get some stitching done. I must say I've been thinking a lot about the Roxy project and I saw a fantastic comment. Actually, there was a couple. The more you read, the more you sort of see a repetitive sort of ideas. On Sarah's videos, there's a few ladies that are suggesting that you use a rolling pin, which is a great idea because most of us would probably have an old rolling pin. If not, they're quite reasonable to buy because the bobbins can be quite expensive. It seems that the price of bobbins has shot through the roof, coincidentally. So if you haven't got a bobbin to stitch your needlework on and you could use a stick, um, how about a rolling pin? So I've got quite a few rolling pins, so I'm thinking I might pull one of those out for a project. And I've got a bobbin, so I could do a bobbin, and I really would like to do a journal. So I'm going down the lines of three projects, but I don't know yet. I really need to take a moment and have a look through all those books. <clears throat> the other thing I need to do is probably stop thinking so much about the presentation of the piece, because I think that's the easy bit, is the colours of the pieces. So I'm thinking about taking a moment and going through my fabrics and seeing what sort of grabs my attention. Some colour schemes. I know I want to do a tribute to embroidery of doilies because I've got a lot of them and I've got a lot of morsels. that have cut out of bigger pieces that I've just kept. So I'd love to bring all of those into a piece and then stitch the Roxy project around them. So that means bright colours. So definitely one of my pieces is going to be all brights. I have also a lot of Japanese fabrics. So I thought maybe the blues and the reds would make a nice project. And then the third one, well, I don't know. I need to go through my fabrics and see if there's a, a charm pack or a jelly roll or just something there that maybe is a cluster of fabrics. And I need to ensure there's a bit of green because it's all well and good doing these random colours. But it'd be nice to have access to lots of greens to really help that sort of garden grow, so to speak. Okay, so I have just done a little, little stitch around the manger to secure that fabric down, just a little stab stitch. So now, that doesn't sort of suit. I need to find something to stitch. Won't see that. I'll have to go looking in my embroidery cottons to find something to stitch. Won't be a moment. I wonder if there's something here 
everything's balancing on top i had a bit of a clean up too because the red journal of stitchery is sort of coming to a close i was able to sort of do a bit of a tidy up which was therapeutic so i need a pale blue i think or a, a slaty that one might do it yeah so i emptied the containers that i had everything in for the project i haven't emptied the containers of fabric only the containers that held all of the notions like the beads the buttons random pieces of lace oh gee that felt good it was like the end of a project sort of need a few threads So my containers are empty. So I really am just ready now to decide on what color combinations I'm doing with my piece. And then once I figure that out, I might then go back through my beads and just create a little pile of beads that suit that color combination. And if there are any buttons that suit it, things like that. So that's what I'm going to do over that Christmas break is sort of dive into my cupboard of fabrics and see what comes out. But I definitely want a, a doily version. All these embroidered doil doilies that I have and even some I did when I was a little girl. I'd like to build them into a piece at this point I believe they will be like a snippet roll scenario where they the background fabric is stitched onto something that will store the piece another item around the house that I thought of could be used is a um, wooden spoon would make a great holder because then you could easily hang a wooden spoon or a rolling pin on your wall and your snippet would come down so horizontal to the floor and the rolling pin and the wooden spoon would be the the holder of the piece does that make sense So, yeah, oh, there's so many things one could use. You could even have a real kitchen theme and get the um, egg beaters out. Remember the old egg beaters we used to use? Well, the shaft, of the metal shaft through the centre would be big enough to hold a piece of fabric. I should just turn my phone off briefly. You can hear it pinging. So it's nice and early. But someone's awake. Once I finish filming this video, I want to do one more tag video. It was a, se a series of five videos, but I'm going to film a sixth video because I've done some work on some of the spare tags as well that I want to show you. So once this one's filmed, I can then um, so this is number 12. My bunting is finished. Christmas bunting advent calendar is finished and would you believe I haven't even put it up I'm going to save it for next year it'll be rather sweet to pull it out and have it up because I would have forgotten what I've done where I feel like I know the piece intimately and 
I'm not doing a lot of decorating this year in my home because we're going to be away. We're visiting a lot of family over that period. We're going to everyone. So no use putting up too much Christmas. Because I'm not even going to be here. Okay. So now there's a little bit that runs behind baby's head. Not sure when you'll see the final page to the red book. We'll just see. There might be a random video pop up with that. I don't even know what design I'm going to do. Isn't it funny? I struggled this week a little bit with these prompts because there was no given direction. Because the girls said you can do whatever you want. I did know I wanted to do an angel. So that, that was, you know, pretty straightforward. But I must admit I floundered a little bit because I was like, well, what am I going to do then? where when the girls gave us a prompt, even though some of them, I was like, oh my goodness, a snow globe? How am I gonna make a snow globe? Why am I doing this? But then once you sort of start thinking it through, it's like, oh yes, I can do that and that and that. Well, because we didn't get that direction, I floundered as well. Isn't that funny? Good, that's got him. Don't fall out. And of course it does right near the end. Just go and knock that off. And I think there's a little bit of, little bit in there. It's a bit hard to see because I have um, red ink everywhere from my friction, friction pen. I just need to stitch another little line there and then I can iron it and get rid of all those marks. Now the other thing I want to do is frame this a little bit with some straight line stitching. So I might do that next so that I know sort of where I'm going to go with my last of my stitches. Because the lace will be pretty easy just to stitch down. That's, that's no, a no-brainer. But I do want to do some border stitching. So let's just clear the way a bit here for a ruler to come in. So what I want to do is pick a line might just do to there that straight? Yep. To sort of create its own little pocket. Did I get that straight? Yep. And then D. 
down here, we might bring it in either side, but stopping it so the nativity, uh, the manger is in front of the stitch. And then we can do one down here. Just to give that its own little space. And then everything will fall in around it. I think that'll work. Now we'll do a similar thing to the stripe underneath. We'll frame that, but we'll lift. Actually, I might do a overcast stitch on that and that, I think. So what I mean by that is needle and thread. And these two pieces will be whip stitched down. Like just with some random stitches, not too neat, not too messy, just right. That'll secure that ticking down. Well, fake ticking. Ticking's now starting to appear in shops. Because if you don't know what ticking is, and that took me a little while to figure out what this ticking was all about. Back in the day when they used to make their mattresses and fill them full of everything from corn husks to feathers sawdust, all sorts of things. The fabric was this really heavy duty uh, cotton fabric and it often had stripes on it for decorative reasons. It'd be a gray, a blue or a red burgundies. Um, well, these, these handmade mattresses, that fabric was called ticking. So now that this ticking is starting to come back into the antique and vintage fabric markets because these old mattresses are being stripped down and the fabrics all cleaned and then sold. So they are quite a heavy duty dense fabric so that all the inners of whatever the family decided to fill their mattress with <clears throat> didn't come out. So for the slow stitch world or the embroidery hen hand sewing world it's not a bad fabric to have as backgrounds or little morsels of it because it's quite a dense nice feeling fabric and stripes are always good if you're working with laces and florals and spots to have a stripe in your work often balances your work out nicely so that's that's the story with ticking it's coming back in the vintage world but at my local um, fabric shop I'm seeing rolls of it coming in so the manufacturers of fabric they're watching us they they're they're watching what we're all doing and if there's an opportunity they can provide a fabric especially a ticking which is hard to get at the end of the day they are from very old items so to get some ticking sometimes is quite a challenge especially an original so to have the manufacturers work them into fabric packs there might be a designer that has added a stripe <coughs> and based it on some ticking or the classic ticking stripe so yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a frog in the throat today, Feel a little husky. So 
So I'm just doing a little whip stitch around this edge. What I'll do is I'll go until the video is pretty much done and then I will put at the end a photo of the final finished piece but I think you're going to see most of it anyway. So I'm whipping around this edge. Okay. I'm just thinking I might even do um, some fly stitch up this side for something a little fancy. Just gives that border a little, a little something. That'd be nice. So where's my thread? I'll do it in the same tones as Mary and Joseph, the same colours. So I'm going to come up on that side. Got to think about it for a minute. Down on that side. And then in the center where the two cross, secures it down. And then we start again. Up. Down on the opposite side. Come up right where that stitch went in, in the center. Just puts a little decorative element to that side of the box. Concentrating. So, as I said at the end of this video, you will see a second small six-minute video, which will give you a bit of a snapshot of my world. So, pop over and have a little look. I hope the music's not too obnoxious. <laughs> oh, dear. And then I'm going to film next... <clears throat> I might do a straight stitch down to there because I'm thinking I might couch this down. So I'm going to come back up that straight stitch with little stitches just to hold, hold it into position. Just itty bitty little, hope you can see. If you don't know what couching is by now, you should do because we've been doing enough of it. <clears throat> there we go. That is one side of the box done. So we can end that off. Now, I don't think I've got enough fabric of cotton. So I could do this little bit here. Same thing, I'm going to couch it down. So, oops. So I'll bring up the needle. And down. 
and then a couple little stitches to hold it. Now you could use a different thread to do the holding, of course, if you wanted to highlight the over stitch holding the main stitch down, but that's enough. I'm going to keep it neutral. <clears throat> Okay. Another piece. How are we going for time? 15 minutes. Plenty of time. Don't know why I'm whispering. So there's my big stitch. And now just a couple little stitches to hold that big stitch down. Okay, lovely. Another one done. Let's have a look. Now, have I got enough to... I might have enough to do that one. have enough to do that whole stitch but we'll do what we can and I can always re-thread so I get three little stitches and then I'll need some more cotton Maybe one more. Yep. And we'll end it off and start again. All right, guys, I might leave you at that. I've got a few minutes and I'll finish this piece, add the buttons, and I will pop some videos at the end. And that's the final, final bunting. Final, final piece for the season. So thank you, thank you all for joining me. I do have one more piece to go in the red book, but I'm not sure when that'll happen. I could even put a little note in there and do that one next year as a bit of a surprise. Here's a little piece you can make for your... your um, Christmas album, that'd be that'd be fun. But we'll see. I'm sure there will be a day where I'll be like in between work going, mm, I feel like making something. So if I do, you'll see it at the beginning of the Roxy project for 2023. 
as I said, in between Christmas and New Year, you probably won't see any videos. If you do, there'll be some books. If you don't see the books, well then they'll be they'll be showcased somewhere. Just gonna play it by ear and have a bit of a break, and I'm sure you are all going to do the same because we have been working hard on these stitchery projects. I was watching Sarah's video and she's got so much more work to do and it's so tricky when you're working full time at a job that's not in your home and you've got to literally down tools and then find time to come back and stitch and oh boy, I'm sure there's a lot of you in the same boat because these things just take time. I'm going to keep going. I was going to say goodbye but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to finish this little bit here. Whoops, sorry. Clink. I need to take my bracelet off because it'll be annoying you as it clinks. All right, I just have, I do a combination of knots, if you've noticed, to end off. Sometimes I go through three times. Sometimes I go through once and then do a little loop with the needle. Sometimes I go through and wind the thread around. So it's a bit of a, a mixed bag of of finishings for me. I won't have enough to finish this across, but I certainly will come awfully close. It's amazing, like I saw there was 10 minutes left to the video and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll pull it up at that. There's ages of work here. But it's quite surprising what you can achieve actually in 10 minutes. One more stitch, I think. Oh, it might be a bit. Okay, so I just need a little, little bit more to finish there. Then I can stitch the lace down. And I'll overcast stitch around that blue denim-y looking denim toned fabric. And then see where we go from that. And as I said, I'll pop some photos. So you still have a, a week's worth of videos coming. Finishing off my tags. And then I've got my Christmas decorations, slow stitch Christmas decorations for my tree that probably won't get up and I'll, they'll just hang in a vase of you know fake flowers that I have all year I'd say that's what's going to happen to them but at least they get made because I try and make some decorations for my tree each year okay there's the border and the manger completed. So that lace just gets stitched down there. There'll be a little bit more stitching there. And then this lace motif can come into position here. It's like all these vines around. A bit of jiggling there to get that positioned right. And that's good. Okay, everyone. Thank you for joining me and I thoroughly love this project as you can obviously tell and I'm looking forward to the next one. So have a great Christmas and thank you so much for hanging out with me in my craft room. 
Stay safe. Bye for now.